Namaste angels. Thank you for joining, liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. It's exactly 11, 11 PM on Friday, October 25th. And that means everybody needs to stop and make sure that they are thinking and or speaking positive thoughts and words over themselves. If any, if you are in the middle of talking about yourself, no negative self-talk, not when you're starting my video, not at 11 and 11 PM, no negative thoughts about yourself because you can just as easily manifest that into your life as you can positivity. And this week, maybe more so than some others in any given year, there is the potential. The veil is very thin between the spiritual realms and the 3D. And um, it's you know really, really easy to manifest negativity into your life or to manifest positivity into your life. So it's all about perspective and how we feel and think about ourselves and over humanity. So why am I saying that? Well, in several cultures throughout the world this week, there will be celebrations of light versus dark, good versus evil, dead versus alive or woke, waking. Um, and, you know, both in the literal and the spiritual and metaphoric sense of that phrase. So I got a ton to talk about. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. I mean, those of you who have been here before, welcome to you too. But I just want to give a little heads up to the newcomers that this is the reading before which I talk about things that may affect members of the elect or perhaps the illumined, right? So the illumined are members of the elect too. And then there are other members of the elect that are not considered illumined. That doesn't mean that everybody's not, you know, necessary and valuable and that I'm not reading for all of you. I absolutely am. But before I do that, I like to talk about the things that may affect us either um, on the, uh, like some of the religious um, calendars or theological calendars and also the celestial calendar or planetary calendar. And, you know, maybe just other stuff that I know that like I like I think it may affect us. So this week I'm going to start with the Christian calendar because there is so much happening. So on Monday, October 28th, we celebrate the feasts of St. Simon, the apostle and St. Jude, the apostle. I'm going to go straight to www.franciscanmedia.org and read a little passage that talks about both of them. Jude is so named by Luke and X. Matthew and Mark call him Thaddeus. He's not mentioned elsewhere in the Gospels, except, of course, where all of the apostles are mentioned. Scholars hold that he is not the author of the letter of Jude. Actually, Jude had the same name as Judas Iscariot. Evidently, because of the disgrace of that name, it was shortened to Jude in English. Simon is mentioned on all four lists of the apostles. On two of them, he's called the Zealot. The Zealots were a Jewish sect that represented an extreme of Jewish nationalism. For them, the messianic promise of the Old Testament meant that the Jews were to be a free and independent nation. God alone was their king, and any payment of taxes to the Romans, the very dominion of the Romans, was a blasphemy against God. No doubt some of the zealots were the spiritual heirs of the Maccabees, carrying on their ideals of religion and independence. But many were the counterparts of modern terrorists. They raided and killed, attacking both foreigners and collaborating Jews. They were chiefly responsible for the religion against Rome. I'm sorry, rebellion against Rome, which ended in the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. As in the case of all the apostles, except for Peter, James, and John, we are faced with men who are really unknown, and we're struck by the fact that their holiness is simply taken to be a gift of Christ. He chose some unlikely people, a former zealot, a former crooked tax collector, an impetuous fisherman, two, quote, sons of thunder, end quote, and a man named Judas Iscariot. It is a reminder that we cannot receive too often. Holiness does not depend on human merit, culture, personality, effort, or achievement. It's entirely God's creation and gift. God needs no zealots to bring about the kingdom by force. Jude, like all the saints, 
is the saint of the impossible. Only God can create his divine life in human beings and God wills to do so for us all. St. Jude is the patron saint of desperate situations. On the Hebrew calendar, the 30th marks the first of the month of Heshvan. So that's what's going on there. And to talk about what Heshvan is, I'm going to www.shabbat.org. Not shabbat.org, shabbat.org. C-H-A-B-A-D.org. March Heshvan, M-A-R-C-H-E-S-H. V-A-N, which is sometimes called Chesvan or Hezvan, is the second month of the Jewish calendar, counting from Rosh Hashanah, the eighth month from Nisan. Heshvan is the only month that does not have any holidays or special misfit. We are taught that it is reserved for the Moshiach, who will inaugurate the third temple in the month of Heshvan. So they're expecting the Messiah to come during this period, this month. The great flood in the days of Noah, or Noach, as he was in those days, N-O-A-C-H, began during this month. And it was a year later, also during this same month, that he left the ark. In the month of Heshvan, we also commemorate the anniversary of the passing of our matriarch, Rachel, She's buried on the road to Beit Lakum, where throughout the ages and still today, Jews of all walks of life go to pray and to beseech that she may intercede on their behalf as a mother does for a child. You can read more about Rachel there. And I think that's all I'm going to say about the month of Heshvan, because again, we have so many things I want to talk about this week. On the Hindu calendar, it's Diwali or Deepavali or Deepawali. <laughs> it's per, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing it right in any and all of the cases. It's a Hindu festival of lights, which is celebrated every autumn in the Northern Hemisphere or spring in the Southern Hemisphere. One of the most popular festivals of all Hinduism, Diwali symbolizes the spiritual, quote, victory of light over darkness, good over evil, and knowledge over ignorance, end quote. I have a lot of clients that are wanting to get um, purchase energy healing and things for me this week to be like cleansed, um, on around prior to after Diwali. Like it's important during the celebration, temples, homes, shops, and office buildings are brightly illuminated. The preparations and rituals for the festival typically last five days with the climax occurring on the third day, coinciding with the darkest night of the Hindu lunisolar month, Kartika. In the Gregorian calendar, the festival generally falls between mid-October and mid-November. So it starts on the 27th of October, which is the same day as the new moon Scorpio. And then it lasts for five days. In the lead up to Diwali, celebrants will prepare by cleaning, renovating, and decorating their homes and workplaces. So they're wanting to clean themselves too. And that's why they've been coming to me, right? For um, energy cleansing, spiritual cleansing. During the climax, Revelers adorn themselves in their finest clothes, illuminate the interior and exterior of their homes with dyas or oil lamps and candles, and offer a puja or worship to Lakshmi, the goddess of prosperity and wealth. They light fireworks and partake in family fests where mithai or sweets and gifts are shared. Diwali is also a major cultural event for the Hindu and for the Jain diaspora, from the Indian subcontinent. So Jainism is actually a religion, um, Asian religion or a religion from the East that predates both Hinduism and Buddhism. It's the religion from which what is now known as the swastika and an anti-Jewish sentiment. Um, it's, where the, it's where that symbol comes from. It was a representation of Jainism, which is actually a religion of peace and nonviolence. So they, they didn't mean it to hurt anybody. In any case, moving on from that, the five-day festival originated in the Indian subcontinent and is mentioned as early, or in early rather, Sanskrit texts. The names of the festive days of Diwali are documented as well as the rituals, and they vary by region. Diwali is usually celebrated 18 days after the Dushara or Dasara or the Sain. I mentioned that when that festival came up, 
I said in X amount of days, it will be Diwali. Um, this goes on to talk about, it looks like specific parts of the East where it's recognized. You know what? I'll, I'll jump to the end of this. Some other faiths in India also celebrate their respective festivals along with Diwali. This is why I said um, cultures all over the world in this moment, at this time, this week, will be recognizing good versus evil, light versus dark, dead versus woke or alive. So some other faiths in India that will be doing it alongside Diwali are the Jains. They observe their own Diwali, which marks the final liberation of Mahavira. And the Sikhs celebrate Bandi to mark the release of Guru, Guru Hargobind from Mughal Empire prison. While Nuwar Buddhists, unlike other Buddhists, celebrate Diwali by worshiping Lakshmi. While the Bengali Hindus generally celebrate Diwali by worshiping goddess Kali. The main day of the festival of Diwali, the day of Lakshmi Puja, is an official holiday in Fiji, Guyana, India, Malaysia, except for Sarawak. Mauritius, Myanmar, Nepal, Singapore, Sri Lanka, Suriname, and Trinidad and Tobago. And Guyana is actually not in the East at all. It's in South America. So, you know, that's just to give you an idea of what's going on in other parts of the world. While we're celebrating our Day of the Dead, they will be too. Um, maybe I should use that as a segue to go into Mexico and the Day of the Dead. For that, I just went to wikipedia.org. The Day of the Dead is a Mexican holiday celebrated throughout Mexico, a particular, and in particular, and in central and south regions, and by people of Mexican heritage elsewhere, like here in the Americas. The multi-day holiday involves family and friends gathering to pray for and to remember friends and family members who have died and helping to support their spiritual journey. In Mexican culture, death is viewed as a natural part of the human cycle. Mexicans view it not as a day of sadness, but as a day of celebration because their loved ones awake and celebrate with them. In 2008, the tradition was inscribed in the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity by UNESCO. The holiday is sometimes called Dia de los Muertos in Anglophone countries, a back translator of its original name. It is particularly celebrated in Mexico where the day is a public holiday. Prior to Spanish colonization in the 16th century, the celebration took place at the beginning of summer. Gradually, it was associated with October 31st and November 1st and November 2nd to coincide with the Western Christian triadum of All Hallowtide, All Saints Eve, All Saints Day, and All Souls Day. Traditions connected with the holiday include building private altars called ofrendras, honoring the deceased using calaveras, Aztec marigolds, and the favorite food of be and beverages of the departed, and visiting graves with these gifts. Visitors also leave possessions of the deceased at the graves. Originally, the Day of the Dead was not celebrated in northern Mexico, where it was un unknown until the 20th century because its indigenous people had different traditions. The people and the church rejected it as a day related to pagan elements with Christian Catholicism. They held the traditional All Saints Day in the same way as other Christians in the world. There was limited Mesoamerican influence in this region and relatively few indigenous inhabitants from the regions of Southern Mexico where the holiday was celebrated. In the early 21st century in Northern Mexico, Dia de los Muertos is observed because the Mexican government made it a national holiday based on educational policies from the 1960s. It has introduced this holiday as a unifying national tradition based on indigenous traditions. And that takes us right into Halloween, which is celebrated the same day. I also went to www.wikipedia.org. 
Halloween, which is pronounced several different ways, and also as Al Halloween or All Hallows Eve or All Saints Eve, is a celebration observed in several countries on October 31st, the eve of the Western Christian Feast of All Hallows Day. It begins the three day observance of All Hallowtide, the time in the liturgical year dedicated to remembering the dead, including saints or hallows, martyrs, and all of the faithfully departed. It is widely believed that many Halloween traditions originated from ancient Celtic harvest festivals, particularly the Gaelic festival Samhain, that such festivals may have had pagan roots and that Samhain itself was Christianized as Halloween by the early church. Some believe, however, that Halloween began solely as a Christian holiday, separate from the ancient festivals like Samhain. Halloween activities include trick-or-treating or the related goozing and souling, attending Halloween costume parties, carving pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns, lighting bonfires, apple bobbing, divination games, playing pranks, visiting haunted attractions, telling scary stories, watching horror films, and you know, so on and so on. Some Christians historically abstained from meat on All Hallows Eve, a tradition reflected in the eating of certain vegetarian foods on this vigil day, including apples, potato pancakes, and soul cakes. Soul cakes or soul mass cakes are small round cakes traditionally made specifically for Halloween. If you didn't know about that. From www.catholic.org, All Saints Day is a solemn holy day of the Catholic Church celebrated annually on November 1st. The day is dedicated to the saints of the church, that is, all those who have attained heaven. It should not be confused with All Souls Day, which is observed on November 2nd and is dedicated to those who have died and not yet reached heaven. So for example, souls in purgatory or other lost souls. Although millions or even billions of people may already be saints, all saints day observances tend to focus on known saints. That is those recognized in the Canaan of the saints by the Catholic church. But what they're saying is truthfully, Anybody who has passed away and is believed to have gone to heaven is a saint. So your own mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, you know what I mean? Not just these people who they declared saints. All Saints Day is also commemorated by members of the Eastern Orthodox Church, as well as some Protestant churches, such as Lutheran and Anglican churches. Generally, All Saints Day is a Catholic holy day of obligation, meaning all Catholics are required to attend mass on that day unless they have an excellent excuse, such as serious illness. Other countries have different rules according to their national bishops' conferences. The bishops of each conference have the authority to amend the rules surrounding the obligation of the day. All Saints Day was formally started by Pope Boniface IV, who consecrated the Pantheon at Rome to the Virgin Mary and all of the martyrs on May 13th. Okay, May 13th is also the feast day of Our Lady of Fatima. This was done in the year 609 AD. So Our Lady of Fatima is much later because that occurred in the year 1917 AD. So 609 equals 69, a number that I've mentioned many, many times is associated with Mary in addition to the 13. And of course, um, 1917 equals nine, nine, nine's also connected to Mary. Um, Boniface IV also established All Souls Day, which follows All Saints Day. And he, this goes on to discuss more of what these things are about and how it begins with the Day of the Dead in Mexico and goes through November 2nd. It's a whole thing that you can continue to read on, but I'm going to move to Black Solidarity Day, which is also on November 2nd, as I recall. Now, this is from my memory. I was like, it's Black Solidarity Day too. Let me, let me pr pull up something about that. And I brought up this Wikipedia page. It does not mention the date. However, I think I'm proven right 
by one of the references here. If you go to the page yourself, the Wikipedia page for Black Solidarity Day, you'll see that on September 26th in the year 2018, one of these files, an article was referenced to contribute to this passage as to what Black Solidarity Day is about. And it was written by someone named Barbara Campbell on November 2nd in 1971, which is an interesting date in itself too. That's 11, 11, 9, 9. And the name of the article is Some Schools Close for Black Solidarity Day. And it's from the ar archives of the New York Times. Again, it was retrieved on September 26th in 2018. So I, I believe, I'm pretty sure, since I remembered it November 2nd and this article uh, that was referenced is dated November 2nd, 1971, that November 2nd is the appropriate day for Black Solidarity Day. Now, what is Black Solidarity Day? It's a memorial day that was created in 1969 by Panamanian-born activist, historian, playwright, Carlos E. Russell. It was inspired by the fictional play, Day of Absence, by Douglas Turner Ward. In that play, it was like, what if there were no black people in the world? Like, basically, who would watch your kids and cook your food and clean your house and, you know, all of these things that black people do? Who would be like the laborers and the contributors to the world? Who would build the country if, if there were no black people? That's what the play is about. And so Black Solidarity Day is a day that's modeled after that holiday where black people are supposed to like not contribute. We're not supposed to do anything. We're supposed to just not go to work, not go to school. And I remember it because I used to not go to school um, for Black Solidarity Day as a child. So anyway, it's annually observed the day before election day in November. Oh, okay, so maybe it does move around. That would make it sound like it moves around. So we can talk about this again when election day comes up, but it's annually observed the day before election day in November, the first Monday of the month. Its purpose is for African diasporic people to exercise a 24 hour moratorium from shopping or participating in other commercial activity, such as using the transit system. The Pan-African ideal of the observance is to highlight racial inequality and the gap between the wealthiest of one of the most powerful nations in the world and those living in poverty. In the early years of its observance, Black Solidarity Day was a means of unifying many of the New York City communities to show their economic power with school closings and cultural events. It is still celebrated in pockets amongst African-American and Caribbean neighborhoods. Part of its purpose is to show that the spending power of communities of color has an impact on the economy. It is recognized and observed in higher education. That means a lot of colleges observe it and close too. Last but not least this week, I want to mention on the, Christ the Christian calendar, the celestial calendar, um, of course, the new moon in Scorpio, which is huge. So that's happening on October 27th. The date October 27th equals 19, which is a very important number too, again, connected to father. Last week, I believe it was in last week's general, as well as the previous full moon reading that I did, the full moon in Aries, I talked about father energy. I said people may be connecting with their father. People may be healing an energy um, with a masculine that is significant in their life or a male that is significant in their life, very possibly their father or some father figure. Don't you know one of my clients who's over 40 who didn't know if her father found him um, or at least found awareness of him? He's, he's passed on, but got a picture of him and everything this week, just like it showed up in the cards last week. So that 19 is super, super significant because that number 19 is what told me those things were gonna be happening. If you remember, like those of you who saw the reading, I, I put the, the 19 together with some other key things. And I said, it's very connected to the Scorpion King or God, the father. So that actually came true. Well, here's another 19, October 27th, the day of the Scorpio new moon is also a 19. And guess what time the moon is occurring? 11.38 p.m. That's another 11.11. It's happening at four degrees. That too is another 13 or four or 11.11. 11. 
All right. So a very, very high energy day. I still have some things I want to talk to you guys about in terms of what I was shown that I have been calling the 13, 13, 12, 12, 11, 11 uh, situation. I might ask one of my author friends or find some other writer or something to um, help me do it that way rather than make a video. I don't know what I'm going to do still, but I just think that the information needs to be laid out plainly. Maybe a video needs to happen and a blog needs to happen about it so that everybody can get the information and have it available at their hands and look it up and read it at their leisure and take it in and understand all of the impactful things that are happening on these dates that I've been mentioning. So again, it began on um, October 11th, which is the day that Mercury entered shadow. And then um, following that, there was another day in between that I had marked. Well, now we have the 27. We're marking that. That's the new moon in Scorpio also. The 13th, the 13th, um, October 13th. I don't remember what happened on that day that was significant to this. Of course, it was the last of the feast days of Our Lady of Fatima, but that wasn't it. Um, so fortunately, I do have this stuff written down. I did like make myself some some notes as to these things that were going on because I had I was adding all these numbers and doing coordinates. I, I get a little bit crazy with this stuff. But the 13th was also significant. So now we have the 27th. Then the 31st, Mercury. Oh, I didn't even mention that. Well, I'm going to mention it now. <laughs> I'm going to mention it now with the celestial calendar. 31st, Mercury goes retrograde. So that's the, the, um, the first number, the 13th. It was that something occurred on the 13th and something is occurring on the 31st. So it's like 31st is 13 transpose. It was like 1331. And then with the 12s, um, of course, on December 12th at 1212 a.m. is the full moon in Gemini, the twins or two or 11. So that's something else that I have to talk to you guys about. And what I was shown is going to be occurring, you know, in total between this day all the way through December 21st, the winter solstice. So um, we'll get back to that. But back to this week on October 31st, again, at 1141 a.m., Mercury goes full on retrograde. So some of us have already been feeling the effects because, you know, once Mercury enters shadow, it's on for some of us. <laughs> um, but now it's on for everybody. 27 degrees, 38. So that's like a 9-11 which is interesting, the, the um, position at which Mercury has gone or will go retrograde in Scorpio. On November 1st at 4.25 p.m., Venus enters Sagittarius, so that should be fun too. And that's it for this week. So moving to the dice. We're beginning with no. Party and romantic dinner. Spirit says, try again. I had this come up a lot in my dailies last week that relationships and stuff, they needed to be tried again, but we'll see in a minute. Uh, weekend away and eat cake. Happy birthday to any Scorpios who are celebrating anybody who's celebrating anything else. Congratulations. Happy, happy. I hope all is well with you guys. Eat cake. Enjoy. Um, maybe for Diwali and stuff like that, people will be eating cake. So, yep. This is exactly the way it was happening in my um, daily readings for my Patreon clients and customers. First, the die would say, try again. I would try again and it would say it's 50-50. And I definitely took that to mean like in relationships, making another attempt. Some of us are having a second time around, a second chance at a relationship. It doesn't have to be necessarily a romantic relationship. It can be with anybody. It can be with your father, mother, friends, whatever, or a romantic partner, uh, business partner, whatever. It has to be 50-50. Like we have to split this partnership down the middle and each give our full effort to the situation or it's not going to work. So going to the cards, depending upon how much time I had, um, somebody related to me asked, actually asked me to do one of the four card spreads that I've been doing for my um, astrological readings for the weekly reading. You know, like one that was like a general one surrounding energy, one work and one love, in addition to the other spread of nine that I do. 
Um, so if I get to do that, I'm going to use the Rider Waite Tarot and the have an overall energy of the Four of Wands in reverse. Speaking of Mercury and it being retrograde, Night of Fire might come through for somebody. Um, but in addition to that, overall energy so far, the Ace of Air, brilliant new ideas and inspirations, seeing the truth of a situation and a challenging beginning. So it's like a brand new start, but it wasn't easy getting to this new start. It was like, you know, climbing a mountain and there may still be a few more bumps ahead in the road, but it is a new start nonetheless. So let's be like thankful for that and cognizant of that and appreciative. Chariot falling away, wanting us to see that there. Also the two of winter. So a choice that we have to make and maybe we've been um, hesitant to make it. It's like, if I don't open my bills, I won't have to pay them. <laughs> you know, that kind of energy. Uh, and maybe because we're worried about what others will think about our choice or our decision. So rather not make a decision at all. But the overall energy here is more mercury, basically. Um, Major Arcana card six, the lovers, which represents the sign of Gemini, which mercury rules. And in this deck in particular, it really is about love. True and long lasting love finds its way into your life. Follow your heart with caring actions and choices. But in general, the lovers can also be about a decision. Where, it, where and when it is, um, to me, it's typically a heart versus head decision. And that's maybe what that two of swords was about that we saw too. Like somebody wanting to make the logical choice, but their heart is saying, you know, nah, like that, that's, you can't go that route. You gotta do what I want. You know, you, the, the heart and soul want this, but your mind is saying this. Speaking of 50-50 efforts and 11-11s all over the place. Ooh. All right. Let me finish my, my thought and my sentence. Um, the four of wands in reverse tends to mean that like where we make our effort, when and where we make the effort, like only and all good things come of it. It's going to be super positive when we go out of our way to share with others, to give to others and to receive from them. You're like to be open to receiving in whatever way we can, like just doing our best, putting our best effort forth. It's always going to come out good. Also the four of wands in reverse can be about unexpected, like fortune, good fortune surprises whenever this card appears. Um, you know, but again, it doesn't mean not to put your effort. So something good could be coming, like falling out of the sky for you. But it's sort of like, if it does, it's in, re in reward for the work that you've done still, right? So the effort that you put forth. Now, when I pick this up, speaking of try again and a relationship first not working out, the three of swords upright is behind it. So there may be literally, right? some pain behind this four of wands and, and maybe a second chance is coming in the past. We had a difficult time and maybe we'll be given another chance. It's another ace of swords upright. Like the one that we're starting with over here. Whoa. Okay. Again, this is about brilliant new ideas and inspirations, seeing the truth of a situation and maybe a challenging beginning. Challenging beginning can also again be represented by that three of swords or perhaps the nine of swords that is also up right here, which is about worry, sleepless nights. You don't know what to do with yourself. And lastly, a king of pentacles, a Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus, perhaps is specifically or particularly involved. They're very significant uh, in this situation. And, or perhaps it's not about, um, a relationship with a person, you're getting a second time in some sort of financial endeavor or situation. Your, your finances are about to make a comeback. And so that can be what this King of um, Pentacles is about. Maybe you're getting a second time at a job, maybe a job you applied for in the past. It, you know, something didn't work out. They didn't call you. They're calling you now. It's coming back up at a second time. All of these are possible. And also this can be about, even if it's not an earth sign, somebody who's particularly generous, and again, wants to give to you, wants to put the effort for it for you, but you need to as well. Now, the reason I was surprised when I picked up the Ace of Air or Ace of Swords in this deck, because we've got two Ace of Swords here, is because I was in the middle of talking about second time around and had no idea 
that Major Arcana card, whoa, I'm still seeing stuff. Okay, Major Arcana card 20, Renewal or Judgment was sitting here behind the Ace of Swords. Judgment is about second time around. That's one of the meanings of judgment. Also, it represents the planet Pluto and the sign of Scorpio, where the sun has just entered, where the moon enters this week. Um, in addition to that, in the Rider Waite Tarot, it is... Um, it illustrates purgatory, which again, All Souls Day falls this week. And it's sort of like a celebration of people in purgatory that didn't quite make it to heaven yet. And an opportunity for us to um, play particular homage to them and all, you know, get together and pray for them. So that could be another meaning for this card showing up. But definitely second chances in relationships, second time around or in opportunities. And they'll be successful this time, particularly if we put forth that effort. Victory. Good news, it's on its way. Public recognition or awards even. This could be promotion, raise, new job, um, just success in what you're doing, even in your relationships, even where things had gotten ugly before and there was hurt, there was pain, there was betrayal, three of swords kind of stuff. Look what's coming up here. The two of fire right behind the success. So again, this is success in partnerships. You've come into your own. New partnerships or contracts continue to move forward. There is energy of conflict right behind that or of aggression, of action. Sometimes this card is positive for me. It's like representative of a very Martian sort of energy. Mars, the planet of aggression and action. Competing goals, bothersome details, conflict with others. For some of us, this means that the difficulties that we had were specifically at work and or with um, a coworker or something, some jealousy, someone trying to take credit for our work or someone in competition for our position. And I guess, again, us coming up on top because yet another upright card, it is Major Arcana card seven, the chariot with Archangel Metatron. And Important achievement, self-discipline, willpower, public recognition. So we got two cards that are talking about public recognition, awards, rewards, and that's the Six of Wands and the Chariot. The Chariot represents the sign of Cancer, so a Cancer could be particularly significant in your life or perhaps another water sign. It's also about travel, movement, growth, expansion, victory. Uh, could be literal movement, could be metaphoric movement, maybe connected to spiritual ascension. And either way, it's like, again, we're coming out on top with the nine of earth here, enjoying life's little luxuries, spending quiet time alone and successful self-employment. Nine of earth is about, you know, sort of coming into your own and being fine um, with that and spending time by yourself, even like, you know, just being just feeling confident in yourself and successful in your growth and your direction and where you're going and what you're doing, because maybe right now you understand that you earned the abundance that's coming to you. The three of earth for me is about abundance that is earned. The power of creativity, recognition for very high quality work, be a team player. This could have something to do with a relationship as well. Perhaps one that occurred at work, whatever kind of relationship it is, friendship, romantic, business. This could be about a project, the group project, the team or something at work. Um, or maybe even going into your own business. All of these are possibilities. Again, successful where we put in proper effort and, you know, try. Pretty awesome from both decks. You know what, on that note, I will do a first spread with this one. And maybe I just won't do everything that I normally would do with those. Ooh, okay. That's the position representing us this week. Major Arcana card 16, the tower. Surrounding, ooh. Major Arcana card 15, the devil which represents the sign of Capricorn. This may be that king of pentacles again, too, in your life. Maybe specifically a Capricorn. Again, Virgo, Taurus, also connected to that. Work and finance. Major Arcana card zero, the fool. And lastly, love and relationship. Major Arcana card 14, 
temperance, which represents the sign of Sagittarius. And for me also Aquarius, because this is the damn water bearer. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. It makes me so like triggered <laughs> to see this and, and know that it represents Sagittarius when to me it, it's a water bearer. All right. All right, let's see what we got here. The tower representing our energy. Well, I'll start with, as it relates to love, the tower crossing temperance. So temperance as it relates to love in itself. So I'll just knock this one position out. Um, tends to be very nine of earth that we just saw here. I don't remember where it is. Oh, here it is. Conveniently, it showed up for me. Um, tends to be very a very nine of earth energy. It, it says basically that we, if we're struggling to find, you know, peace and um, comfort, happiness, companionship, the way that we want it in our relationships, we first need to find and have peace within ourselves. And we need to consider like, what things do we feel negative emotions about? What things about, you know, are we holding and harboring negative emotions about things like guilt, regret, resentment. Maybe that's what represents the three of swords or even the nine of swords, the worry, the panic, you know, because we didn't treat somebody properly or whatever. And we got to figure those things out, mistakes we've made in the past and forgive ourselves for them and let them go if we're going to be able to um, be with anybody else and have a healthy relationship with anyone else and make any kind of progress. So this devil that's sitting here at top temperance can be representing us feeling stuck in our own negative emotions. If it's not about us feeling stuck in an unhealthy relationship. Now, often when the devil shows up, that is what it means. And not only in an, in an unhealthy relationship, but in one that maybe has been pretty long term and we've we finally gotten to the place, you know, where we're just feeling we like we've tried, we've tried, we've tried. Maybe that's what the three of swords is about or even the nine of swords. Like I keep working at this and it has not worked out. Now, again, judgment shows up. So maybe we're getting a second chance to try to do it right. Or maybe in the past we've tried and it didn't work out and we're getting a second chance to do it right. And that's been going on for a long term. Right. This back and forth where, where we we haven't been successful, but this time we'll have another opportunity to really put in that 50 50 effort and be successful. So for some of us, that's what it means. And for others, yeah, it's just it's it's too long and it's just time to acknowledge that we've put in a lot of effort. We've put in a lot of energy for over a long period of time and it is just not working. The key is to talk about it. If we're feeling that, if we're wanting to save the relationship and not give it up, especially the key is to talk about it and to um, be honest with each other about what we're feeling, and where we're at. And if it is, if we agree that it's an unhappy relationship, then it's time for it to end. And that may be another reason why the tower is showing up. It's just like, boom, this has to go. Unfortunately, I mean, it could come to a very like a screeching halt, an explosion, you know, boom, something could happen that's that's going to like blow the lid off this thing. Um, but at the same time in general, temperance is a healing energy. So, you know, maybe not that, that may protect you from that sort of explosion. And instead we'll just be brought to a place where we're needing to admit this is over. Right. And so let's just part ways. And maybe that is why the nine of earth ends up because it can also represent single people for me. Right. And each person going their own way and instead getting to know and like and love themselves a little more rather than focusing on other people and relationships that aren't happy or successful. The tower is another card that says, like, don't rush to judgment. Right. The ju major arcana card judgment. Don't rush to judgment. Don't make, you know, assumptions or presumptions about your partner. Definitely talk to them and find out what they want to do, because maybe the fool will come into play. Major Arcana Card Zero represents a brand new path. That brand new path that we're walking could be something that we decide to walk alone. Again, a single people, nine of earth, or it could be something that we decide is worth a second time around as in judgment. And we're going to try to fix this thing. And again, there is an air um, about us that says it can be super successful. We have an overall energy of the four of wands in reverse. The four of wands, um, is one of those cards where whether it's reverse or 
upside down um, or right side up, it's the four of wands. So it's an awesome card either way, an awesome energy, um, an energy of joy and happiness. So we got love, we got relationships, we're being surrounded also again by the devil. That could mean that there are people um, close to us who are dealing with you know, devil sort of situations, situations in which they feel stuck and maybe we're being given and maybe something blows up around them. It doesn't happen in our life, but it happens close to us, family members, friends. And we have an opportunity to help somebody come to the realization if they can on their own that, you know, they always have some sort of choice. They always have some sort of option in every single situation. Even I've heard even people um, sometimes in jail and you say, well, they don't have any choice. But I've heard people in jail speak um, super eloquently, more better than I'm going to do right now, about how even they won't allow themselves to be completely imprisoned. Like, I'm not going to allow you to imprison my mind, my spirit. You know, so we have choices about what we'll allow in our lives and what we won't, you know, despite what everybody else is doing and karmic energies that are around us and all those things too. In your finances, you may be feeling stuck too with the devil. And there's an opportunity for, again, a brand new path. There's an opportunity for fresh energy, maybe for healed energy through temperance uh, and through this energy of joy with the four of wands in your finances. Same thing at work. There may be some situation in which you feel stuck at work. You may feel unhappy. You may hate the job. They hate you. Um, you don't feel like you're being recognized enough. There's not enough bonuses or whatever the case is. And so you're not really sure what to do. It may be time for you to even consider your own business, you know, or retirement. Maybe it's just time to, to cease working because you're feeling trapped. And that may be something that's healing for you also. In terms of health and work in connection with the devil, you know, we may want to look into a new practice that relieves us some, of some stress, not overstressed, overworked, and thinking about that nine of swords. Again, that can be about, you know, the need for sleep, the need for rest, healing, recovery, temperance wants to come in and do that and give that to us again as well. And your finances, you may be feeling that those are a little stuck also, but again, they're going to get better. There's going to be new life in the finances, even if something happens and something may happen for the positive with the tower sitting over um, major arcana card zero, the fool. Something may happen like you took a risk, even if it's a, like a, it's a risk, like applying for, you know, a new job or something like that. You put yourself out there and you could be very, very surprised with the energy that you get back in that regard. Tower doesn't have to be something, you know, scary or, you know, harsh. It can sometimes be positive. What it is, is in a very abrupt energy that comes in very, you know, super fast and unexpected and surprise. So with these cards, we do want to be careful about being potentially overworked, overstressed, tired, even other people putting, you know, like the leg, trying to lay their burdens down on us. Um, yes, help other people to um, come to an understanding that they need to watch their, their self-talk too, not to talk, you know, make sure your friends are not talking negatively about themselves and holding on to negative emotions like regret, resentment, even as it relates to money. Sometimes we regret our financial situation. We resent um, the fact that other people are doing better than us. And that's a block too. Um, so those are the things that I want to say about these spreads. I do want to move on to the other spread, but I'm glad we got to see all that. So let's take a look here with these. Now, Major Arcana card 19, the sun wants to be seen. Your plans will work out well, bringing you happiness, prosperity, and success. You'll garner the recognition that for your accomplishments that you so richly deserve. Major Arcana card 19 represents the sign of Sagittarius, just like temperance does.
crowning the masculine this week. The Knight of Fire, passionate, adventurous, self-assured, and restless. A sudden event that needs immediate attention. Time is of the essence. Think things through carefully. This is what I was actually thinking about when I was talking about the tower just now and saying it's something that comes in very fast and it doesn't have to be negative. I was picturing like the Knight of Fire. Uh, I, and it's funny because with also with that Capricorn energy that showed up, if you look at my astrological reading for the sign of Capricorn, I told a Knight of Fire story um, in that reading. So I just was just reminded about that too. Check it out, especially if you're a Capricorn or, you know, sun, moon or rising, because you definitely may find it helpful. And it's to cover this week as well. It's a biweekly reading. So it comes into this week. So Knight of Fire, Sagittarius, perhaps where Venus is about to enter. Sagittarius, Leo, or Aries, if someone likened to those traits or attributes, could be swooping into the life of the masculine, or this could be representative of his energy. He may be Prince Charming to the rescue in the life of someone else. He is surrounded by the King of Fire, motivational, idealistic, ambitious, and charismatic. Focus, focus, focus. Communicate with vision and be a leader. Take advice from someone creative. King of Fire is also a Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, or someone likened to those traits or attributes, and is the quintessential divine masculine of the tarot. So this can absolutely be the masculine's energy. In his subconscious, Major Arcana card 8, Justice, with Archangel Raguel. Of course, Major Arcana card 8, Justice, represents the planet Venus, who is the ruler of the sign of Libra. Fair and just decisions. Do what you know is right. Stand up for your beliefs. This could be the masculine focusing on doing what he feels is right for himself and or others. Could be connected to a legal situation, especially in consideration, again, of that first spread. There could be divorce. There could be some other sort of separation with the devil showing up, um, crossing the fool, right? New energy versus an energy of being stuck, maybe ending that and starting fresh somewhere with someone somehow. Um, this is about the scales balancing out, the scales balancing out. For the feminine, crowned by the six of air, things are looking up. It's the end of a difficult situation. You may even be taking a trip. Six of air can be Again, literal or metaphoric, just like the chariot that we saw a moment ago, um, as to movement. So it's about moving into calmer, stiller waters, things getting much, much better than they had been. But some of us may actually be visiting people or having them visit us. Or moving or traveling in other ways. Feminine surrounded by Major Arcana card 16, life experience. Or guess what this is? The Tower, a significant life event a powerful revelation that leads to change. It's time to spread your wings. So that sounds like a good tower, right? That sounds like, like being made to realize something and recognize something and it, it propelled and motivates you towards something else. So that could very well be what this is. The tower for the feminine after the six of air. We just got told things are getting better and then there's a tower. So like I was saying, the tower doesn't always have to be bad. What is here in the feminine subconscious? Boom. Do you believe that? It's another four of wands. Contentment, peace, and abundance, a happy home life, and the successful completion of a project. A feminine or the feminine, a bunch of you, could actually be moving or having somebody move with you or visit you with the six of air. Very potentially, again, about moving. The tower, often about an actual tower structure, like a home. And the four fire, often also about a home, moving, cohabitation, marriage. So maybe very unexpectedly, somebody says, move in with me, be my roommate, be my, you know, wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, come live here. <laughs> Something ex or family member says, come live with me or says, you know, move somewhere else. You got to go somewhere else, but it's somewhere else that's better for you where you end up happy. Or maybe very unexpectedly, like I was saying, you get some sort of notice that an apartment you applied for before, like the job I suggested somebody could have applied for before. Now we're hearing from it years later or months later, whatever, or you place you bid on or whatever. Now you're being recognized. You're being given an opportunity to move into a new home. Some of us. And or to like remodel a home or 
something or to enter a commitment for a fire of wands can also be about commitments, contracts. So it's moving towards something very, very positive. Again, either literal or metaphoric crowning major arcana card 13 release or death, which represents the sign of Scorpio. It's the end of a phase or situation, spiritual transformation. It's time to move on. I think for most people, again, it's the end of a phase of funk, like what something wasn't working well and the, the tides are turning. Now you're getting your just due. The scales are being balanced out, like I just said for people. So that is death coming in, death to that old energy of when I was broke, when I needed a place to stay, when I needed a job, and things are, are happening and moving this week. At the root, foundation, like what started this? Ten of water. A very uh, happy, family, celebratory kind of energy. A contented and rewarding family life. Your emotional and material needs are met and you have trustworthy relationships. For, so for example, like my friend, my client that I talked about who got to learn who her father was this, um, this week, that could be the energy that starts for her, this representative of this 10 of water, 10 of cups, family energy that gets her moving. Maybe she'll travel to where her family is, where her father's from now, even if she doesn't physically move or travel to those places, she can now move forward after 40 years, you know, where she felt she was missing something. There was a void. Now she has closure. She can move forward based on what happened here with her family life. You see what I'm saying? So apply it in your life, how it applies, if it applies at the heart of the matter. It's another King of Pentacles. Like we just saw there in the pile. Again, the king of earth is a Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Could be representative of a job or some financial venture or something, or just the energy of both giving and receiving because the king of earth is generous, professional, responsible, and practical. A successful time in your life. Confidently accept opportunities you're offered. You have the Midas touch. I will go ahead and clarify these with this other deck. We've already seen the energies repeating from one deck to another. Let's see what happens with a third tarot deck now. Top the Knight of Wands is that two of winter. So the Knight of Wands may be who, for a change, has not just jumped into action. He's debating it first, which is different for him. Procrastination and worrying about what others will think is blocking you from making a decision. If you're torn between your own desires and someone else's, Follow your inner guidance. This may be directed particularly at a fire sign, maybe. I mean, it doesn't have to be. It could be someone likened to those traits or attributes, but maybe a Sagittarius, Aries, um, or Leo, specifically masculine or male, is needing to make a decision but hasn't yet because they're sort of stuck between what will maybe my family think, society think, my friends, whatever it is. The job, you know, like, should I take this job um, as a musician, as a drummer, when I have a job as a banker? What will the people think? Everybody's going to say, you're crazy. But I don't really care about being a banker. My heart is in being a drummer and being a musician. So I'm stuck. I'm torn between a heart versus head decision. So in the meantime, I'll do nothing. And then that's how you have the potential of missing the opportunity. Surrounding the masculine, atop the king of uh, wands is another chariot. Major Arcana card seven. You can successfully balance various or opposing energies all at once through determination and focus. You've earned the rewards and recognition that you're receiving. So again, this is you deserve, you're deserving of this for your efforts, for your generosity, for what you've done. 
Major Arcana card seven, the chariot again represents the sign of cancer. So this is the second chariot we're seeing. Um, and this, this too is about movement or travel or both, both and literal or metaphoric. Again, just like the six of swords for the feminine. Atop, um, what was that? Oh yeah, Major Arcana card justice. It's another devil. Major Arcana card 15, ego. You may feel that you're trapped in a situation, but that's not true. Be careful not to overly focus on material wealth and break free of negative thinking. The devil showing up with major arcana card justice can definitely be about a legal situation, um, something in which you're feeling stuck. But again, victory is on your side and it's in your cards. Like, like it's literally in your cards too. Uh, this could be a divorce. This could be some other sort of situation that you feel. And it doesn't have to be a legal situation. I'm just saying there's a good chance of it with the devil and justice showing up. Um, but if it's not a divorce as in, you know, leaving a marriage, maybe you are married, you've been tied, married to something else, married to your work, married to whatever. And so this is you focusing on how can I get out of that, you know, um, and do what is more befitting of me and my soul and my heart's desire. For the feminine, atop the six of swords is the sun, Major Arcana card 19, the sun. Your plans will work out well, bringing you happiness, prosperity, and success. And you'll garner the recognition that you so richly deserve. Some of us are traveling again, but not only traveling somewhere sunny and warm. You know, Florida, California, the Caribbean, or that's from where somebody's visiting us, or somebody that's having um, a medical situation this week, maybe perhaps surgery in terms of like the Six of Swords, the swords, the cutting, that turns out well too. Surrounding the feminine atop the tower is the seven of summer. It's time to stop procrastinating and to make a decision so that you can move, right? Get moving forward with a situation and a priority. If you need to do more research, then do so, but don't overthink the situation. Listen to your heart. So the same thing the masculine needs to do is what the feminine needs to do on her side. And this could also be representative of one person in their inner masculine and feminine, both telling them that they need to resolve, you know, um, their heart's desires, basically. Atop the four of wands in the feminine subconscious, it is another six, the six of autumn which is a card that's very much like justice for me, sort of mirroring the masculine's justice card. This is the card about the ability to both give and receive. And it's purely out of like unconditional love, no agenda. Your success and prosperity have allowed you to pay off debts, to acquire wise loans, and to receive a grant or scholarship. In return for heaven's blessings, be sure to share the wealth with others through donations of time or money to reputable charities. The six of autumn for me is about assistance that is coming your way. Some sort of blessing, some sort of help from the universe. It could be through another person, but it's like God working through somebody to be a blessing to you. Crowning a top major arcana card death is the 10 of winter. It's the end of a career path. So death says it's the end of a phase or a situation. And here comes a ton of winter to say, yep, sure is. It's the end of a career path, a project, or a relationship. And that brings feelings of mixed joy and sadness, relief and disappointment. Put aside your fears about these changes and trust that a brighter future awaits. Atop the Ten of Cups of Water. It's another six of winter or sword. So we got one here crowning the feminine and we got one here at the root with the family. So maybe we're going to visit family. We're going to visit loved ones or they're going to visit us or we're moving on to a happier time and place with family members where perhaps we had had some hurt, some difficulty, some feelings of loss, separation, um, you know, like lack of love in the past. The challenging times are coming to an end and you can now breathe a sigh of relief. Let go of the past and embrace the happier times ahead. 
And lastly, at the heart of the matter, atop the king of earth is another ace of swords, the card with which we began this reading. Implementation of your brilliant new idea may get off to a rocky start, but keep going. The challenges will help you to refine your plan and to reshape your goals into something even better. So everybody's getting a brand new start. Um, I think that reads this reading and, it's, and it may very well be in your finances, your work. It's just going to be something that makes you happy. It could be connected to a, a direct earth sign, a Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus. But everybody getting a new start in some area of their life. And it may not be completely an easy start. Like, you know, um, the Ace of Swords is certainly not like the Ace of Cups, but it's a new start nonetheless. And it's a blessing. Further to that, some advice for all, for everybody, each archetype. And from the Angel Tarot to the Masculine, it's another Seven of Cups. Feminine's got one here. Now you've got one. Some decision that has to be made. It may be Neptune, which is currently retrograde in Pisces, which it rules. That's another 11, um, uh, 11, 9 date because it's November 27th. I think that Mercury, I mean, not Mercury, that Neptune finally goes direct again uh, in Pisces. A complex decision. The need to do research. Stop procrastinating. So the masculine's got these two cards here that indicate that he's procrastinating by decision. Something could be having to do with a mode of transportation too, or his car. Something may have happened with a car. I just, I didn't have that before, but I just did. Um, I don't know what could have happened with a car. I'm not sure it was good though. I mean, I think he has a way out of it and it's not going to be as bad as it maybe would have otherwise been. But I think um, part of it is bad, like maybe some sort of car trouble or maybe he got pulled over. Maybe it's a legal situation and that's why justice is showing up here with the devil. But for somebody, somebody's got something going on with the car. Maybe a decision has to be made or maybe he's awaiting a decision as in a legal decision. For the feminine from the angel tarot, the ace of water, ace of cups. I was saying this ace of swords There's no ace of cups. But now we got both. Falling in love or the resurgence of a relationship. The ace of water, like judgment, can be about second time around, reconciliation, um, getting back together, trying, trying again. Spiritual growth and enhanced intuition, also possible. And maybe even a new home. Okay, that's for the feminine. Wow. Masculine, the king of summer or cups. Warm-hearted, devoted, loving and faithful. A trustworthy person or relationship enters your life. You may receive wise and compassionate advice from someone who speaks directly from the heart. The king of summer is a Scorpio where the sun entered, where the moon will be, um, where Mercury is, where Venus is. Yeah. Um, so I think it's first and foremost representing the sign of Scorpio, but of course, possibly a Pisces ruled by Neptune. Um, or a cancer, although we saw two chariots here, it could definitely be a cancer, or someone who's not even a water sign at all, just, you know, likened to those traits or attributes, particularly generous and loving and caring um, during this period, this week. And the animal tarot to the feminine. Speaking of water signs, it is Major Arcana card 18, the moon. So again, we do have a new moon in Scorpio this week. And when I do a reading, um, those of you who watch me, you guys know, if I do a reading on or around the moon, the moon shows up like in just about every reading possible. It sneaks itself into all of my readings to make sure that we, we talk about it. So yeah, Major Arcana card 18, the moon in the tarot actually represents the sign of Pisces. But Earth's moon rules the sign of Cancer. And again, this is actually the Scorpio um, new moon. So all three of the water signs represented by this energy of the moon. It's important to trust your intuition. Even if you're unsure of what's happening, all will be revealed soon. So worry is unnecessary. This is saying throw out that nine of swords and just go with the guidance that you're receiving from, you know, your, your heart, 
your soul, the divine, intuition, all of those things. And don't worry about what others are going to think about your decision. You do what your body is telling you to do. I pointed at the masculine, but that goes for everybody, you know. Um, masculine from the traditional tarot, the right away tarot, seven of swords upright. And you see, this is somebody trying to get away with something. This is about, this can be about you taking a risk. I talked about taking a risk, uh, with the fool before and it working out in your favor, but look how he's taking away these cards, uh, these cards, these swords, and there's two swords left. And you got this two of swords here. And again, this decision that you make. I think you need to take a risk on yourself. Take a chance on yourself. And again, make the choice that most resonates with your heart and soul and your intuition and your gut feelings and your heart. And then do that. And then you're going to be very, very happy if you take a chance or risk on yourself. And lastly, feminine from the right away tarot. It is the hangman in reverse. Hangman also represents the planet Neptune and the sign of Pisces. And it's about an air of suspension, um, just limbo and a decision that needs to be made. And we just haven't made it again, seven of, of summer. So feminine this week, we're being guided to, um, you know, to get on that, to put some effort and some focus into making a choice in our lives where, where that's appropriate. And, um, you know, taking advantage of the air of suspension because it doesn't last for long. As we see, eventually this guy flips over. Also with the hangman um, in reverse, this is about spirituality, ascension, growth in that area, as can be the ace of cups and the sun and the moon too. So some of us may be experiencing some ascension um, over the course of the next week too. And, you know, just let it happen. Yeah. Just let it happen. Just go with the phase, the transition. Think about it in terms of death, right? Major arcana card death and just go with the flow. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the general. I will be back with love, only love. Um, thanks again for watching, joining, sharing, and subscribing. Also do check out the new merchandise video, the new store video that I put up earlier. And again, your astrological sign videos. Some of them, because my my channel is so screwy um, and people don't get their notifications. Some of them have like thousands upon thousands of views. And then some of them have like, you know, a hundred views <laughs> because like, it's like, maybe you don't know, I put your sign up, but all 12 signs have been posted. And um, what else have I got up there? I'm going to do a moon reading also for the Scorpio new moon. So we'll have all that going on. Now that I let you know about it, if you don't get notified, just check for it. All right. Namaste guys.